Hello, Buffy Stinchville here. I'm a physical therapist, specialist in women's health, pelvic health, the female athlete, and the dancer athlete. Today, I wanna to talk to you about uh, one really common problem that women and men actually deal with. Um, it is hip flexors, and that is these right here on either side, very, very tight. Um, people constantly are trying to figure out, well, how do I stretch these hip flexors? They are always tight. They never seem to let go. Um, this is very common for runners and dancers and other athletes and even just regular people that are occasional exercisers. I'm going to tell you two big hints about how you can start to get them better, and it actually does not involve stretching. Um, stretching is just trying to put a Band-Aid on it. Well, it's tight. I'm going to stretch it. Um, yes, there are many good stretches. I will say they shouldn't look like anything too crazy. You can have your tail tucked one foot back and maybe lunge a little bit and feel a fabulous stretch right here as long as you are not arching your back. You have to keep your rib and hip stacked and you could probably feel a good stretch. But that's a good short term fix, but it's not going to fix it long term. Good luck stretching that for the rest of your life. So if you really wanna fix your hip flexors, here's two things you need to get first. I've already done a video on alignment, but I'm gonna review that here. If we are living with our rib cage flared, we are living in a constant state of the pelvis being tipped forward, and that lets the hip flexor shorten and grip like crazy. Um, so if we don't change this and how we live in our body, it's going to grip all day long whenever we're on our feet. And then when we are sitting, the hip flexor is going to keep on gripping. So I need you to find a pole or a broom. Most of us have that at home um, and figure out if you are the rib cage flarer. Lots of girls are. So bring your ribs over, over your pelvis and you'll notice that things flatten out. You should get your bra line a lot closer to the pole instead of here. That's the I love to grip my hip flexors posture. Let's bring it back. Um, number two is learning how to get your glutes back on. This is really tricky. It takes people lots of visits with me, lots of time in between their visits to actually get them on. But I'm gonna tell you first, the way that you can test if they're working is to stand. We've already gotten our rib cage over our hips. You wanna make sure you're not having all your weight on your toes, get your weight over your heels more. You're going to think of turning on your glutes in a different way. Rotate your thigh bones out. You feel those tighten and you'll also feel your arches lift up off the floor a bit. Can you keep your glutes on and begin to hinge? Some would call this like the beginning of a deadlift. Can you keep your glutes on? Can you keep them on as you start to bend your knees? If you cannot and you feel like they've already shut off, that is where you need to start working. Um, so that is something I'm breaking down with a lot of patients that oftentimes there's an overlap of glute dysfunction and pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, so two things, are your glutes wanting to shut off? Can you sit all the way down into a chair very slowly or get all the way up out of the chair and keep your glutes engaged? And how is your alignment? If you can fix those two things, you're going to get yourself a lot closer to actually resolving your hip flexor tightness. I hope you guys have a good day. You can always messenger me on Facebook and I'll talk to you soon.